give this a little go. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I've got here is uh, got my paper, put a bit of gesso on it. It's just for a demo, so uh, inexpensive way uh, to uh, practice painting. So let's get some of this Prussian blue. I've just taken it straight out of the out of the tube, and let's make a few shapes. It's just um, just a little. Thing just to give some ideas that's all just a little practice that's all it is okay you can have a little bit of thunder out there that sounds like I'm gonna take another brush now and I'm just gonna use this sky color what I'm gonna do is just fill it in So this is just all paint straight from the tube. I've just made uh, like the sky colors, just cobalt and uh, titanium white, Prussian blue, as I said. No oil, no nothing. It's just straight from the tube. If your paintbrush starts picking up some color, you can just wipe it on a, on a clean cloth or paper towels I use sometimes, most of the time. Oof. Yep, got some thunder. Okay, so I've basically now filled in all that area. I mean, even, even this at the moment is looking kind of interesting, I think. Let's just see what happens when I do something like this. If I bring it the other way, let's try some in there. I don't know where this is going, honestly. <laughs> Just making this up. And let's uh, let's cut through there. Soften the bottom of that. Let's bring this this way. This way. I'm just playing around, okay? Just to give you some idea. Some ideas. in there don't we it's a bit dark okay looking slightly messy at the moment so my brush is still got a bit of that uh, color on so what I'm doing is I'm just creating some lines with it Okay. Well, we've got something nice going on. We can add some little shapes as well. Now, what you'll see happening is the Prussian blue is starting to get very hard to get its dark colour. So I've just gone over that again. Let me take a liner brush, one of those long thin ones, one of these, it's quite a nice one, and let me just work 
some of that back in just to see what happens. And I've got to remember to keep wiping this brush. Now, I want to start picking things out a little bit. So adding this this colour back into it now you see I'm getting I can start creating nice little details. So we got a little bit of uh, 3D going on. That's, that's actually quite a steep angle there. Would that happen? Yeah, that's okay, I think. run across it and just split it. I can go across it again and it'll soften the colour a little. What about this part then? Here, I think, split this one up and just soften that edge. There we go. Let's do the same, I think, on this one. Just cut across and we can just soften that. Okay, let's try something else. So I'm going to get another brush. Let me find one. There we go. I'm just going to use this. I'm just going to um, just going to put some of this light colour back on here. I'm just going to scrub this in. Something. Okay, I'm going to go back to this dark colour I was using, the Prussian Blue. Just to see what happens when you put this dark colour on top of a light colour. Let's go back over it. It is building a bit, but uh, now let's see what happens from here if I just use this. I'm just playing around, that's all I'm doing. I'm not trying to do anything uh, specific here. I just want you to take a look at this and try it yourself. Just to see what it does, because there'll be 
a real definite use for this. So you can get like a really nice soft effect. If you had a finer brush, you could uh, do this even finer. And if we use a lighter colour, perhaps we can work back into it. It's starting to look quite nice. I'm going to run out of my sky colour. have to make a bit more. But anyway, I think you can see a real possibility for that. All it is is just having a little play around. That's it. Right, next one. Let's cover it all with this dark colour. I'm going to make a little bit more of the sky colour because it's all gone. <laughs> now, I made up a mid-tone here, so this is somewhere between the sky colour and the dark one. So it's just in the, mid in the middle, perhaps it's a little bit too light, but uh, that's okay. So let me think, let's, let's think that we have, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure where this is all going of course as I just said. You haven't got to start off this way, I'm just <laughs> trying to figure this out as in my head. So, sort of going up, I guess it's going to go into that. And maybe we can create another angle here. choppy bit of water this is there we go we've got something some type of movement haven't we something going on there some pieces are okay 
bits and pieces are not okay. So you can you can chop it up, but make sure that it makes sense. Everything's got to go somewhere. If it's going behind something, it's going to come out somewhere else. So that's looking a bit more interesting, isn't it? I think that's all right. Like that bit. I'm going to use a fine brush in a second. I mean, in general, when I'm working, I work pretty much this way. I work from, from dark uh, to light, but the tone that I'm using here would, would probably be a third one because the second tone I'll be using would be pretty close to this one something like you can see in there so that's looking interesting already isn't it now I'm gonna take this line of brush again um, I'm gonna use that same one same color it's just just work back into it and we can sort of define some of the areas we can uh, refine some of the pieces sort of cut them up make it a bit finer create some angles like this don't go crazy though you need some of these darker ones in there Take that off down there. Take that off down there. Take that off down there. I'm going to keep this one though quite long. And this one I think I can cut into around about there. Alright. Too, but <laughs> it's done now. Um, this part doesn't matter too much on the bottom. Okay, so we did quite a lot even with that middle tone there. So we've got a nice little uh, bit of flow there, haven't we? So let me. Let's add some little details in these pieces. There's some little bits so we can... The light's not quite getting at it, but there's still little forms. Now this, this obviously is really small, so the details are really compact. If this was on a much bigger uh, canvas, I mean, I know I'm using paper, but if this was on a bigger canvas than this bit of paper, I should say. Uh, things will be different but in any case uh, when you are working on um, big canvases anyway you will do areas like this so good to practice now <clears throat> from here let's I'm try to get as much of this off as I can let's uh, see what damage we can do with this I just need to have a little think about where my light bits are going to go. So I want that to come across there. It's good to sort of space it out at the moment, these, these light bits, because you don't want to crunch it all up. Because it's sort of quite, you can get quite lost, um, like overdoing it. And obviously, if you've got a reference, it'll be sort of quite specific on it but you know you have to do things in a certain way but since I'm making this up now let's put a bit of light across there
the sound of it like something. Part, so I've got to be careful. So you'll notice if I if I put this up in there, it's gonna it's gonna add a ridge here of something. Uh, so maybe this part is, I don't know, like a, I don't know, quite deep. And um, if I move this up, I'm going to shorten that. So if I if I start putting that up in there, then that's going to become even smaller. So you need to think about that. You know, even even with these little parts here, that if you're going to start putting lines, if I put if I put this now right next to there, it's going to shorten that. But if I if I sort of do it here, I'll put it right on top so you can see. You see? It's really easy to uh, overdo things, very, very easy. Just gotta be really careful with it when you're doing this. Not to bunch your you know your your lines up too tightly so why it's good to sort of spread out over the picture what i've learned over the years is you know just sort of spread it out so you can you can see what's going on you can see if you're bunching up too much So we can keep refining, but you just got to be careful. You don't end up losing what you've done. You can, of course, you know, if you if you make a mistake somewhere, you can go back into it, scrape it off with a scalpel, maybe. If you want, if there's an area that you did wrong, scrape it off, fill it back in. And you can do that. The royals. Yeah, maybe I'll just leave it like that. Yeah. yeah, I know I've used this painting in the last video's example, but it's okay. It's uh, it's in my my studio, so why not? So you can all you know you can see um, you know some of these elements here, can't you? I think you know we got these these sort of angles you know coming up that I've created, and then you've got the. Uh, Another light on top here, the darker in here. Obviously, the light then is more here, like that. But the way that these shapes are carved out, like I said, I'm using about five different tones when I'm when I'm doing these five, uh, sometimes six, you know, including a highlight. Um, but the movement is it's kind of like this. But the way which I painted this was 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 in this way. But uh, there was drying in between. So that was the difference, but the uh, you know the sort of technique, the movement is uh, very very similar. Yeah. So just to show you that as a comparison. So a couple of examples here. Uh, this one is oil. This one's an acrylic. But the technique is the same. I know that they look different, but technique for building up this and building up this is the same one. And just to put this little example here, and I wonder if it's of any use that you can see that it's the elements of this in there somewhere. Like I'm looking at this part here, for example, and maybe I can see that there a little bit, you know? So one of the important things course with creating seascapes is creating angles these are very important these angles are really important very steep here you know, it's 
very very steep angles so they're coming up like that but they're not there's not a lot of light on them because the lights all here I know that they are extremely simple I know that but um, I, I meant them to be simple because it's it's just important to um, just to start from somewhere and to to really experiment you know just just moving the brushes around and you know learn to cut things and you can cut things across like here for example you can see you know you've got this cut through which happens you know of course it happens with the water you know you, this is on different levels you know it's moving you know this way is coming this way it's coming up you know you, you have to show all these different things um it's, it's very complicated it's well at least this type of work is very complicated uh and you have to sort of understand it you know what exactly is going on so I suggest that you really study other artists work not only mine but I suggest you study other artists work um, just to see how they did it and just to look at the brush strokes and, and see um, see the reason behind it just look at the at the tones and the and, and also like the tops of for example pieces like this you know and, and the effect that gives because these, um, I think they have to be spontaneous. You know, they have to look spontaneous because the, the sea is. So if everything's like copy paste, you know, you keep doing this all the time. It's like, you know, so it has to be spontaneous. And when you're sort of experiment with the brushes and you're turning it and you're drawing it along and you're creating these angles and moving your hands around, you know, you, you um, sometimes I like to be spontaneous even to myself. So. I surprise myself. I surprise myself by what's happening, but you're controlling that because you're the one guiding it, if it makes any sense. So you're the one doing that, knowing that you're gonna get a certain result. If, I think that's a better way to explain it. Okay, so please check my website, www.vernonwjones.com. Take care and see you soon.